Hey, Stan Arthur here. Are you one of those video editors out there using Adobe CC, Premiere Pro, and still needing to make DVDs? I don't do that anymore, but I've noticed that there are quite a few people who are, who have not really been through the process yet. I'm going to show you what my workflow is. Maybe you can use it for yourself. And in the words of Tone Loke, let's do it. Here we are in Premiere Pro. We've got a sequence that's a 1080p sequence. It's just over 50 minutes long. This is a good length to put on what's called a DVD-5. A DVD-5 is the standard D either DVD-R or DVD-plus-R that you buy in a store and be able to burn your own DVDs with. There's also a DVD-9 that's a dual layer, but we're not going to talk about that. Save yourself some heartache. Don't even try them. So for a DVD-5, we're going to make a uh, a file from this we're going to export this to a file that can then be burned immediately to a DVD in order to do that we're going to choose file export media and uh, let me bring back this over here there we go now the format we're going to choose is MPEG2 DVD NTSC DV progressive is what we want. This was recorded in 1080p, so it's progressive already. Premiere Pro has basically matched it to my sequence settings for MPEG-2 DVD. Let's scroll down here and see what we've got. It's, it's selected the correct frame rate, 29.97. And the, the problem here, though, is, is it has selected standard 4 by 3 ratio. I don't want that. I want widescreen. So I'm choosing that. You can see it's now corrected over here in the preview. And uh, let's see. Looking good, looking good. Okay, we've got a target bit rate of 5 megabits per second and a maximum bit rate of 7 megabits per second. I don't want to go above that. Looking down, looking good. Okay. Now pay special attention here. Estimated file size. To, it's basically 2.3 gigs. That's perfect. That's, that the, I know the quality of this is going to be good at, at uh, you know, 5 to 7 megabits per second. It's going to be good. VBR1 pass, that's fine for the source material. It's not super high quality. I'm not trying to maintain any kind of broadcast quality here. It was shot with a prosumer camcorder. Now, this is very important. Remember I told you this is about a 50 minute video and you can see that the the size of this estimated file and this does include the video and audio files together the size of this is 2337 megabytes or about and it's going to be around 2.3 gigabytes you have to be very careful that this does not exceed 4.3 gigabytes in order to fit on a 4.7 DVD5 disk you're comfortably going to be able to fit about 90 minutes of video on there, maybe a little bit more. If you've got two hours of video you want to put on a DVD-5 disc, you can start dialing these quality settings back here until you get below 4.3 gigs. But then again, your quality is going to take a hit. You may be fine with that because the quality of your source video might be dodgy. It might not be the greatest. Well, that's okay. You can dial it back if you want to put two hours onto a disk. Just do not let this exceed 4.3 gigabytes. Now let's uh, click on the output name and it's going to bring up uh, a folder. It's, is this where I want to set it? Sure. Okay, this is a good one for me. You Make sure you set it for yourself. Name the file. Uh, I'm going to shorten this title here. Click Save. Now all we have to do is we can queue it up and it's going to put it in uh, Adobe Media Encoder when that happens it's basically creating two files it's creating an m2v file for video and it's creating a wave file for the audio okay over here in adobe media encoder you can see we're all queued up and ready to go i'm going to hit the go button and wait for that to encode fully now and then we'll come back when it's done here we are about 12 minutes later and the file is nearly finished encoding Wait for it. Three, two, one, and there it is. Done. All I have to do now is click on this little link right here. A folder opens up that has the files in it that we have just encoded. Let me shrink that down a little bit. There we go. Uh, here's the M2V file, and here's the WAV file. XMP, don't need it, and this is a different one we encoded for MP4. 
All right, but we're going to need these two files in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and close that right now. Now, if you uh, are an Adobe CC user, you are able to download Encore CS6 from the Creative Cloud. So let's open up Encore and then see where we go from there. Here we are in Encore CS6. I'm going to create a uh, new project. I'm just going to call this Grad Celebration. And this is the folder I want it in, DVD selected by default, NTSC. Uh, don't worry about anything else right now. Just click OK. Over here in the Project panel, right-click Import as Asset. Now I'm going to navigate to where those files were. I know they're in the Export folder under Grad Celebration. All right, now we're going to pick. We don't want the MP4. We want this M2V file and the WAV file. So I'm going to select both of those and click Open. And here they are. I'm going to wait for this to conform. You see it's in, in uh, italics right now and it's, it's conforming right now. And when that's done, then we'll come back and we'll drop it into a timeline. Okay, now the size of your file here is going to dictate how long it takes to conform. It's just checking out the file and making sure it's all good. I'm going to select both of these files, go to Timeline, New Timeline, and now I've got my video in a DVD timeline that I can now burn to a DVD. It's already transcoded to the right format, so burning a DVD won't take long at all. So we're going to go to Build and insert a new DVD-R, DVD plus R, wait for it to mount the disc, and then click Build, and we'll be ready to go. It's going to burn the DVD, and we're going to be all set. Let me show you how that works. Okay, now with the DVD mounted, we can uh, go down here and name and name this if we want. I'm just going to call it Grad Celebration 2014. And we've seen, you've seen that we're only using about half the space on this disk, not even. But all I have to do now is click Build. It's going to say the project has problems that may cause the disk to play incorrectly. Would you like to view these now? Well, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say ignore and continue because I know that this just means that uh, for for what I call just a plug-and-play DVD we're fine that means as soon as you plug this disc into a DVD player it's just gonna play there's not gonna be a fancy menu there's not gonna be a play button anything like that You're just gonna push it in and it's gonna begin to play in a DVD player and that's really all I want now it says it's transcoding here and it is but it's transcoding the audio only not the video and for this 50 minute video you can see this is happening rather quickly all right now what's going to happen at the end of transcoding, it's going to write the file to the DVD. The DVD disc will be playable in pretty much any DVD player uh, uh, in the United States. I think this is actually region free, so it doesn't really matter. Play, probably play anywhere on any compatible NTSC television. So there you go. That's really all there is to it. Let me know if I've left anything out or if, if you have any other questions, and I'll... Uh, I'll answer them for you. Thanks for watching. This is Stan Arthur. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much. See you next time.